Hello everyone. Today we're talking about fractals patterns, which can be found in nature, technology, the human body, and uh, I'm going to start with uh, Tim that is going to explain to you uh, the geometry of the fractals. Thanks, Edgar. All right. So fractal geometry basically mixes uh, art and mathematics to prove that. Uh, Equations are more than just numbers, right? Um, fractals are important because, uh, for it's also interesting because uh, the important part about fractals is that it's used to describe mathematical uh, things such as natural forms like coastlines, uh, mountain ranges, and even parts of the living body. And right here you can see the uh, Sierpinski triangle, which is basically. Uh, a big equilateral triangle here, and inside the equilateral triangle is multiple small copies. And what we call this is self similarity. So, self similarity is one of the two important uh, properties of fractals. Now, self similarity is basically iteration. So, iteration means uh, a shape is going to be formed and it's going to be small copies of itself that is made up of that big shape. And moving forward, the next one is going to be talking about non-integer dimensions. So non-integer dimension basically is objects that are inside, in between uh, whole integer dimensions. So one, the one dimension would consist of uh, one plane. So just like straight line or curves. Uh, Two-dimensional planes would be squares or circles. So any type of shapes, right? And the third dimension would consist of objects like cubes or spheres. Now, um, an example of a non integer dimension would be, uh, let's say you have a straight plane. You have a straight line. That's the, in the one dimension. A fractal curve would be in, in between one dimension and two dimension. And another good example would also be a coastline. So a coastline is infinite. You really can't measure it. But you can measure the roughness of that coastline. So that coastline, the roughness of it, would be in between the second and third dimension. So that means the coastline is infinite. And this right here is an example of the coach curve. Uh, originally, this is a section of the, the coach curve. Um, the actual shape of it is a, is a snowflake. But as you can see, the iteration adds on every triangle more and more. And it's basically like zooming in. The more you see it, the more you zoom in, the more you see uh, iterations. Right? And the coach curve is a paradox because to the naked eye, it's finite, but mathematically, it's infinite. So that's the coach curve. And this right here is the mantle broad set. As you can see, there are certain areas that are intersecting. And in the middle, it looks like a beetle. But if you start zooming in, you start seeing self-similarity. So you start seeing iterations of the same exact thing right here. And the mantle broad set is important because it is basically show, it basically shows us the potential of fractal geometry. Um, it's basically the emblem of fractal geometry. So this is to fractal geometry what a uh, circle is to regular geometry. That's the mental block set. And then next is Barrett with uh, fractals of nature. Nature is related to the real world. 
So we take this tree, when you see the branching nuts and how the tree grows, it's a good example for how people start uh, bring the idea of the geometry, starting from the simple line to the branching. So the more we zoom in the tree, the more we figure out how it looks like concept of the geometry. So the next one is seashell. When you see seashell, seashell is like it tells us a simple summation theory of mathematics, the Fibonacci theory, when then it's expanding its area. That's what the Fibonacci principle tells us. So seashells are everywhere. Inside in our crops, in the construction system, when you see the the stairs, the spider stairs, um, in, uh, ventilators, on uh, your wheels, everywhere. So, this is a good example for the way works concept. The next one is how bacteria are implicated or reproduced by the binary fusion. So, starting from the main root or the parent cell, it's like branching itself and replicate, replicate itself. So this is also how it shows how nature is. Fractals are repetitive or endless and regular. And the other example is protecting the soil erosion. When you see this, people are using um, the same structure of fractals with the repetition to protect the soil erosion. And the other one is, that is what we can see in the molecular system of the elements. This is for the water, actually. So there's a two, also, there's a two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. So you can see everywhere fructose in nature in relation to the real world. Yeah. So this is all about nature. As I said, fructose are everywhere. So and I will tell you more about how they are connected in the human body system. Thank you, Mary. So, fractals in the human body. We have them in our blood vessels, we have them in our lungs, in our kidneys, in our heart. But there is some, blood, some fractals that everyone can see right now without the need of a uh, go Google a picture online or just uh, open a body to it. So, and these fractals are the the arm fractals. So I'm gonna ask everyone to um, extend your hand. So, as you guys can see, the arm is divided in three parts: part A, part B, and part C. So. This part is uh, the start of the fractal. And now, look at your hand. Your hand as is also formed by the same three parts of your arm. So, this is... Okay. This is part A. <laughs> okay, this is part B and <laughs> so this is part A, this is part B and this is part C. So as you guys can see, it follows the same uh, pattern than your arm, but your finger, your fingers are also formed by the same fractal. <laughs> so, now if you guys can look at it. Don't use the middle finger because it's... It's <laughs> <laughs> to use by now, so... <laughs> so, follow the same fractal. Here is fractal number A. This is the pattern number A. Number B. And number C. 
And as you guys can see, it's the same fractal that your arm and your hand uses. But your fingernail is also using the same fractal. And from, <laughs> from the start of your so or not numbers, right? Now, I'm going to talk about fractal antennas used in the military. 
Mr. Recruits, can you please tell me what uh, camouflage means in the whole class? Camouflage mm. is, in this application, is to blend into your environment. Uh, thank you so much, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so camouflage, self-similarity. As you can see here, soldiers in Afghanistan, and this is a French aircraft somewhere in uh, Africa. Um, since frac fractals are a big thing in nature, they look self-similar to their faces. Now, we use the word camouflage, meaning installation of uh, blending their, of the surroundings to full perception. So, these soldiers have used, uh, basically used the word fractal to look like their uh, surroundings. Because, so, what, that's one of the key things using the military. Same thing with the aircraft. The aircraft just looks like it's the surroundings. So, basically, this is one of the big, biggest uses. Uh, the way it works is, the, the nature shapes gets bigger and bigger in the certain size, and you can actually see how the soldier is like, especially him, you can't really identify him from like literally miles away. Even the aircraft looks exactly the same with surroundings. That's one of the basic use of fractal, um, uh, fractal patterns. Um, this is basically what I have for your presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. And thank you. So that's our presentation about uh, fractal patterns. Um, if you guys have any question, um, I was going to ask anyone um, if you notice anything about you know that triangle, the the Swinkies, Swinkies, Swinkies triangle. Yeah. Is it, is it with an L? Serpensky. Oh, yeah. Serpensky. Uh, did you notice anything about the area and the parameter uh, of that triangle? Ooh, good question. I see yeah, I assume they're exponential, so uh, of course they're going to relate to the bigger triangle. Um, since they are, they are also uh, equilateral triangles, so they're going to be the same, just different ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you think as our advancements in fractals go on, that camouflage will become better and better? Um, yes, for sure. Uh, actually, the U.S. military is actually working on it to to work on the camouflage system. It actually has been like for years now since the day of Vietnam War. Actually, one of the uh, key things they use in the military is you know how they have these long antennas, like in like the APCs or something. That's one of the things we use as a fractal patterns, so they can connect good, good communication system where there's going to be like, for example, if you go to Afghanistan, if you go through like desert, there's literally no connection. But the fractal antennas have made it possible for your like army soldiers to connect, to communicate with their. Uh, Headquarters. So I think camouflage is a big thing, and based on research I, I found out, uh, they're actually working on it to make like bigger and bigger stuff. Thank you.